Hey everyone, this is Clown for Cinema, and welcome to the first ever What Could Have Been. I'm actually really excited to start these series of videos because as much as I love talking about classic movies, I also love just looking at pieces of the concept art and just like seeing how different a movie could have been. Uh, but this first episode, we'll be actually taking a look at a whole animation studio from Disney that was just, that was just brought into existence and then shortly put out of commission. So join me in this first episode of What Could Have Been about Circle 7 Animations. So you may be thinking, Clownfish, what are you talking about? What the heck is a Circle 7? Well, to understand what Circle 7 was, we first need to partake in a short history lesson. Originally, Disney and Pixar had a very different deal back in the day. The two companies had an agreement that Disney had full ownership of Pixar's films and its characters and its sequel rights, but right after the release of Toy Story 2, the companies began to have disagreements about the deal. Eventually, all the fighting led to Pixar's then-owner Steve Jobs, yes, that's Steve Jobs, making an announcement on January 4th, 2004, stating that Pixar would not be renewing the contract with Disney. This was really tough news for all 800 of Pixar's employees to hear, especially for the previous chief creative officer of Pixar Animation Studios, John Lasseter, who was quoted saying this. Ugh. Alright, moving on. Even though Pixar had left them, Disney still owned all the rights to the characters. So, what to do now? In March 2005, the Walt Disney Company created Disney Circle 7 Animation, a CGI animation studio that focused primarily on making sequels based on existing Pixar properties. Quick fact, this studio had a nickname for Rival Studios. It was PixArt. Nice. Uh, after the studio was officially formed, they began working on making straight-to-DVD sequels, namely Finding Nemo 2, Monsters Inc. Lost in Scaradice, and Toy Story 3. So, let's talk about these cancel movies. So, the summary for this movie is that Nemo would find his long-lost brother, Remy? Okay, no, it's not that Remy, but it's another clownfish named Remy. Uh, after this, Nemo's father, Marlin, would be captured just like Nemo was in the first film, and it would be up to Nemo, Remy, and Dory to sit out and try to save Marlin. Huh. This sounds like the same as the first movie, just that you switched around Nemo and Marlin, and you added a new character. Unlike the other movies we are going to talk about, there is no concept art for this movie at all so we just have to rely on our imaginations for this one anyways moving on unlike finding nemo 2 there's actually concept art for this movie to look at so i'm gonna throw up some of the concept art while i read the synopsis all right so the plot for this movie is that it would have been Sully and Mike going to visit Boo to celebrate her birthday. But, as it turns out, Boo has moved. And now they're stuck in the human world. And Mike and Celia's wedding is on the same day. And the prom's tomorrow! Okay, that one's not real, but I just couldn't help myself. But yeah, Mike and Sully are trapped in the human world. They're looking for Boo and have to get home in time for Mike's wedding. Holy cow, that's a lot, but I'm not gonna lie. I would like to see a continuation of Monsters, Inc. And before you say it, I know Monsters of War came out. I I've seen the show, but I'm talking about a continuation of, like, Mike and Sully's story. Like, what happened after that scene with Sully and Boo reuniting? How would have Mike and Sully got back home? What is a monster wedding like? And how do the adults react to seeing monsters roam the streets? Oh well. Even though we didn't end up getting the film, at least we have some cool concept art to look at. Alright, so I saved the best one for last. Why is this the best one? Well, not only do we have a buttload of concept art, but we actually have test footage of what the movie could have looked like. Same as the last time, I'll throw up the images while I talk about the script. So the film would have begun with the character Buzz Lightyear beginning to malfunction. Andy's mom then shifts Buzz back to the original Buzz Lightyear factory located in Taiwan, but 
in a twist of events, it turns out the Bud Light brand has been recalled. To save his friend, Woody, Jesse, Bullseye, Mr. Potato Head, Ham, Rex, and Slinky ship themselves off to Taiwan in hopes of finding him. While in the factory, Buzz Lightyear meets a couple of new characters, Cindy Scissors, Rosie, and the toy made to replace him, Dax Blastar. Buzz also learns about the Smasher, a machine that destroys all rejected or unwanted toys. Cindy and Rosie tell Buzz about the founder and how he's been kept in the dark about the Smasher. Buzz finds a letter that reveals the dark truth about the Smasher and decides to bring it to the founder. As the movie goes on, more things happen such as Woody in the game making a vehicle out of a shopping cart, a bulb machine, and some balloons. Dax blasts start tricking Buzz to go to the destroying room, the place where the Smasher is, and Woody the game stopping the Smasher, but Buzz already getting his legs smashed. Luckily, the game fixes Buzz's legs, and they give him a new chip so it stops from functioning. They tell the founder about the Smasher, Dax Blaster tries to stop the game one last time from going home, he fails, and the rejected toys get repaired and get bought. And everything ends with Buzz, Woody, and the rest of Andy's toys returning home after a long adventure. So, that's the original plot Toy Story 3. I mentioned earlier that there was some test footage for Toy Story 3, so I'll play that footage right now. No. Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying! There's no crying in baseball! I'll be honest, I would have loved to see this movie. Now, I'm not saying that I hate the Toy Story 3 we got, no, that one's perfectly fine the way it is, but... This Toy Story 3 has some really interesting ideas and locations, such as the Buzz Lightyear factory. We also would have gotten our first interaction between a toy and a human, and before anyone says it, yes, I know, there's that scene Toy Story 1 between Woody and Sid, but that's different. Woody was trying to scare Sid, not have a meaningful conversation with him. But, yeah, this would have been really interesting to get, so why did we get this version of the film? In 2005, Michael Eisner stepped down from the role of CEO of Disney, and in came Bob Iger. Bob Iger knew Disney needed Pixar back, so eventually he and Steve Jobs met and came to an agreement. Disney would purchase Pixar for $7.4 billion, and with that purchase made, Circle 7 Animations was officially closed on May 26, 2006. It was clear that Pixar was not happy with Disney trying to make sequels of his properties, but they had only grudges against the employees of Circle 7 Animations, which is why 136 of the studio's 168 employees were transferred to Walt Disney Feature Animations, which is now known as Walt Disney Animation Studios. And with that, Circle 7 Animations was truly dead. Meant to be forgotten, meant to be left in the sands of time. Well, that's the tale of Circle Sun Animation Studios. Eventually, we did get a sequel to Finding Nemo, a prequel to Monsters Inc., and a proper Toy Story 3 made by Pixar, but looking at this concept art, it's a bit strange that for a time, these films were going to be the sequels that we would have seen. I would say it'd be pretty cool to revisit these ideas, but sadly, I think these ideas and whatever else Circle Sun Animations is going to be locked up in the Disney vault forever. But I want to thank all of you for joining me and pondering about what could have been. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, take care.